Bonjour junior engineers! In this video, we're going to go over the topics that you need to cover for geotechnical engineering for the FE civil exam. And now a lot of you have asked me this question before. What should I focus on? What should I go over? And so I'm going to cover all that in here. Now, if you're for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now let's get started. Okay, so for me to go over this, we're going to pull out the specifications and the handbook. So that way we can go hand in hand. So for the handbook, this you actually get uh, access to it during your exam. It is just a manual that is offered by the NCS and it has all the equations that you're going to need for your FE civil. So like I mentioned in my previous videos and then like I always do when I'm actually trying to solve a problem in here, I always pull out the handbook and I always uh, show you guys where the equations are because it's important that you get yourself familiar with it and know where the equations are because it's going to save you a lot of time during the test. Okay guys, so if we look at the specifications here, there are a couple topics that you will most likely not get during your exam. So let's highlight them. So we have geology, we have laboratory and field tests, we have slow civility, we have soil civilization, drainage system and erosion control. So these topics, you will more, most likely get them on your PE than the FE exam. And I wouldn't totally skip them. I would recommend that you guys just go over them briefly, just because in case you might get something during the test. I didn't get anything on this on the test, and I don't want you to waste too much time on it either, where you could actually be spending that time on questions that you most likely will get during the test. Now, you can look at these topics on the FE review manual. He does, Linderberg does go over it briefly. You can also check out the, your books from college or the books that I referenced in my previous video, which I will leave the link above somewhere there. In the future, I will also share with you guys my notes that I used to study for these topics. So that way you don't have to waste time and looking for that information in three different books and you could use that, inf that time studying for your FE exam. Okay, so let's go over the topics now that you will most likely get on your test. So the first thing is index properties and soil classification. You will get questions on this 100%. I got questions on this as well. So for soil, soil classifications, we have two types. We have ASHTO and we have USCS. Uh, make sure you are familiar with this table as well because it is very important to know this for you to be able to uh, classify the soil. Uh, Using this table, you would also need to know the coefficient of uniformity and curvature. I already went over problems on this uh, on here, so if you haven't checked it out, I definitely recommend that you do. Uh, we, I also shared problems I got on my FE exam. They're really great problems. The next thing is phase relations. We've done so many problems on this topic because I got a lot of questions. Uh, I know a lot of people who get a lot of questions on this, so... Make sure you know them. They're very simple, straightforward. Most of the times, all you need is just you use one or two equations. Uh, I recommend that you watch my videos if you haven't. Uh, we solve so many problems on this. Next thing is effective stress. So effective stress, we have these equations right here, the effective stress for buoyancy. We also have the effective stress for uh, retaining walls. That could also be under this category, stability of retaining walls. You got to be careful here with the active and passive earth pressure. Sometimes you also get rest pressure, which a lot of people don't even recognize. And uh, when they don't notice that, they get the wrong answer, unfortunately. So be careful with these things. For retaining walls, you also have factor of safety, overturning, sliding, bearing capacity. So make sure you know this. Uh, we will do problems on this in the future, I promise you guys, so that you are ready for your test. Uh, next thing is we have shear strength. This is the shear strength. We have a couple equations here for it. Uh, things that you need just need to keep in mind, like cohesion and angle of internal friction with sand and, and silt. Uh, for like sand, cohesion is zero. Just a couple things like this that you should keep in mind. Uh, next thing we have is bearing capacity. So this is the bearing capacity. 
for those of you who took foundation you probably were giving a table where you calculate the, these factors right here these three factors now these tables are not provided to you here and do not memorize them because that would be crazy uh you will be given these values if you have a question like this during the test i was given this question and i was given those values this equation though can look simple but it can be a little bit tricky calculating the gamma prime and which b you choose and especially the depth so i will do problem on this in the future so that you guys are uh, set in case you get it in your exam next thing is foundation types this is another one that i forgot to highlight um i didn't get a question on this just be familiar if you took foundation you probably already know this uh just go over it review it real quick if you haven't just uh, go over the, your book and just read that section, just know foundation types, uh, the concepts behind it. There's not really much equations. Uh, there is equations, but they're not provided here and they're very long. So you, there's no way you can remember them. Uh, just something to keep in mind. Next thing is we have consolidation and differential settlement. That one is actually really important. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, to do problems on this i will in the future very soon it is a very important for geotechnical engineering for the fe exam and the thing is there's so many equations on it and it can be a little bit difficult and confusing so i will make sure you guys i will post a video uh, two or three problems on this uh the next thing we have is seepage and flow net i actually got a question on this i see i didn't study this in my class but I did review it and I did go over it. When I was studying for my FE exam, I tried to focus a lot on the equations that are given here on the handbook. And because you will most likely get those questions on the test. So if you just go every equation and just make sure that you know how to use that equation and you know what to use it for and you know a little bit of concepts behind it, I think for the most part, you will be set for the FE exam. So make sure you know this. Um, you know, I took the FE like last year and then a couple months later, my friend took it and she got the same question on this on Flownet. So a lot of people get question on this. So make sure you know it. OK, guys, so that is it for geotechnical engineering. That's what you should focus on and study. Uh, make sure you do a lot of practice problems. I really emphasize on this on every video because the best way to learn something is by doing it and by doing it a lot. Make sure you practice, practice, practice. That is the best way to learn it. And also it helps you understand the problems and you see different type of problems and you also get faster, which is very important for your FE exam, midterm or final because you want to eventually finish this test. So you want to get really fast at answering questions. Okay, guys, so if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below and I will make sure to address it in the future. A lot of these questions that I answer here, it is because people have asked me before. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon. À la prochaine.